Hello, another project breakdown. This one is for a company called Electronic Theatre. Uh, it's a social experience that takes place in interactive digital rooms where you play through cool kind of co-op games with a group of people. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The setup in the rooms is four near-field, uh, slightly above HD projectors covering the four walls um, with various interactive tracking technologies. We were approached to help produce the intro sequences that were played before you started playing the games. As this is a new sort of platform, uh, we needed to remain as nimble as possible to be able to test and iterate and see what feels right within the room itself. Um, this is something that scared me, and it had the prospect of being a complete nightmare because of thousands of it involved thousands of frames and nearly eight thousand pixels across, spanning the four walls. Um, it was a very scary prospect, but Blender's EV to the rescue. Prior to real-time rendering, I don't think a, I don't think we would have been able to produce this type of animation um, within the, within this particular time frame. The viewport preview was massively responsive, and there's no surprises when exporting to the final animation. One of the main highlights for me was making the character Dana an AI that takes you through the backstory and introduces you into the world. I wanted to keep everything in Blender to avoid any other steps in the pipeline, so I used a collection of emissive and black shapes layered on top of each other to build up a face. Instinctively, I would have jumped into After Effects for this type of thing, but having it respond immediately in Blender saves loads of time. The mouth motion was then linked to an audio file, and a noise displacement chain of polys was used for the electricity effects between Dana's uh, antennas. So after exiting the chamber, you jump into a throwback retro wireframe world filled with uh, the main London landmarks. As you can imagine, this was a lot of fun to put together and leaned heavily on the bloom effect coupled with very bright emissive materials. One of the main takeaways I had was um, the use of the wireframe modifier it was a bit of a no-go for this job as it brought the viewport uh, and the render to a grinding halt, uh, losing that responsiveness with all of those polygons. So instead, for every model, I reset the UVs, so each poly occupied 0 to 1 UV space, and created a black image with a thin... Or, or with a sort of relatively thick, sorry, white border. These borders could then be used to drive the emission strength, and by scaling the UV slightly, you could adjust the thickness of the wireframe effect. This kept the viewport super responsive and made render times much more manageable. Going to the actual venue and testing out the animation was great, but um, having recently acquired a uh, Oculus Rift S headset, I was able to test the feel of the animation and get an approximation of the experience without having to travel to the venue every time. Having used a number of creative tools in VR, I'm hugely excited for the Blender XR project. Laying out a scene file or even modeling the scene in VR could bring it so close to how it's actually experienced, allowing for even more immediate feedback. This project was really like no other, and only a year or so ago, I don't think I would have had the tools at hand to even produce it within the time frame. This is also hopefully the first animation of many on the new platform, and it's really fun to let your imagination run wild with concepts. I also feel the need to say that this is not a sponsorship or anything, but if you are in London and you'd like to experience it firsthand, then I put a link in the description. My main takeaways from this project were using techniques to keep the viewport as real-time as possible, leaning on the simplify option in the render settings, um, using as, min like, as little modifiers as possible. I also found that armature deformations didn't really slow things down that much, but shape keys I had to use kind of sparingly, as there was, as there was definitely more of a performance hit with the denser meshes. It sometimes pains me to see only one GPU being utilised while exporting EV renders. However, looking at this thread from March of 2019, it seems like it is possible to launch multiple Blender instances on each GPU in your system. This would have been super handy for this project, as 
exporting a scene means rendering out four cameras for each projector. So I shall be using this technique going forward for sure. Oh, hello humans. Welcome to Electronic Theatre. My name is Dana. I'm an artificial intelligence. An intelligence that, to put it mildly, vastly exceeds the comprehension of even the most brilliant human mind. Anywho, I have a few important messages for you, but don't worry, I'll talk slowly. <laughs>